try and find, right? Where and when did China say that they would invade Taiwan? Do that. Try. I'll bet my last dollar that no one can find that in Chinese media either. Hi, hello and welcome to another video of Fernando Munoz Bernal. Make sure to check that you still subscribe to this channel because I've seen some people telling me that they're not getting their emails when I post another video. So make sure to hit that bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video. But without further ado, let us talk about misinformation and why that cannot hide China's success. Here's the thing, when so many people criticize China, then the people who live in China and the rest of the world have a very different perspective on things. Almost every media outlet that publishes in English, and for certain, every mainstream media outlet in the English-speaking world is anti-China, that is for sure. And most importantly, for me at least, a lot of Spanish-speaking mainstream media in Latin America simply regurgitate the sentiment word by word, which is why I have started posting videos in Spanish. If you want to follow me, here's the link. Feel free to do so. Now, as a consequence of this, people who are fed this mis misinformation automatically become, there's no other way of putting it, but just misinformed. A recent study by Lowy Institute survey in Australia found this to be true. People are misinformed. The sentiments against China are running quite high. A great many people in Australia see China as a threat. And what is most intriguing to me is that they see Japan as an ally against that threat. Let us remember that it, there's only one country since England sent prisoners and soldiers to invade the land that now we call Australia that has invaded and bombed Australia. And it wasn't China. It was Japan. There's only one Asian country which captured thousands of Australians, including women and children, during the Second World War. They imprisoned them, they killed hundreds with medical neglect, slave labor, starvation. That wasn't China, that was Japan. And yet today, because Western media tells us that China is a threat, many people believe that. Because Western media tells us that China is collapsing, Many people believe that. China is neither a threat nor is it collapsing. You are being misinformed. A very recent research paper that was carried out by a British professor in a partnership with a Hong Kong university has found, unsurprisingly, that British media is predominantly negative towards China. We didn't need an academic study to tell us this, uh, but it's always good to have some proof to back it up. Let us talk about Freedom House, one of the loudest pro-democracy organizations in the English-speaking world who provided a 2022 report on Beijing global media influence. The report talks of many, many negative things such as misinformation, coercion, manipulation of social media, intimidating journalists and paying social media influencers like what I've been accused of, right? Among many other, many other negative things. But what is strange is that there isn't a single example given on any of those things. We are simply told to rely on their findings and they have happened and that they could happen even more in the future. That's, that's all we get. Now, take a look. In this section on misinformation, Freedom House provides this photograph right here to support their claim. And it reads, China mourns Notre Dame and she sends condolences to parents. Those are the headlines. Surely, in a report about misinformation, these authors could find some information that could assert as being untrue. Otherwise, I don't, I don't get where the misinformation is. Chinese people do mourn the fire in the iconic French cathedral. She did send condolences. How is this the best they can find? I've got a challenge for you guys, if, if you're up to it. Go to Global Times, go to China Daily, go to People's Daily. All of them have English websites, which I have linked in the description down below. And find something in there that's a lie. Find the misinformation and bring it back to me here in, in a comment. Now, while you're in there, it might be a good time to try and find, right? Where and when did China say that they would invade Taiwan? Do that. Try. 
I'll bet my last dollar that no one can find that in Chinese media either. But you can find it on a daily basis in Western media. So which of our media is actually misinforming us? China is a dangerous threat, not to Australia or any other country or, or region or certainly not Taiwan. It is a threat to the current world order because of one thing and one thing only, <clears throat> because it is not collapsing. China does have the largest military in the world and it is still growing, but it's never sent that military overseas to protect resources. In fact, China sends its businessmen to, 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 to do business around the world and to trade for them. China has never used the words national security to engage in any kind of hostile actions against any other country. China has never asked another country to develop a communist ideology as Western democracies often do. And it has never, never undermined an election to get the results that it wants, despite there being allegations that it has. There's never been an ounce of evidence that they did. Think about it. Why on earth would China care if Biden or Trump wins the next election over there, or if Rishi gets another term or is ousted by Stammer? Think about it. What possible benefit is there to China from any of these outcomes? These are all anti-China people. They just want to slow China down. Now, interestingly, China has never entered a military alliance with any other country. They prefer to not get involved in other disputes except either diplomat diplomatically or through dialogue. It is also the only nuclear power to unconditionally commit to a no first strike policy that should be remembered every now and then. So if China is not a military threat, it's not a political threat, it's not an ideological threat, there's only one thing left, an economic threat. And it can't be an economic threat and be in danger of collapse at the same time. That just cannot be true. China right now is the world's second largest economy and it's growing twice as fast as the US economy, which has its growth slowed down due to inflation during the first Q1. Chinese economy is also growing 10 times or more than the UK and most European economies. Of course there are challenges. I mean, think of an economy 1.4 billion people not having challenges. That's <laughs> But the truth is that the biggest challenge is not inside China. It's the misinformation caused by think tanks like Freedom House that creates reports based on flawed assumptions. Then, these assumptions are amplified by journalists who are either too afraid to lose their jobs or too lazy to do proper research because this then causes the public sentiment to move away from China and that means that populist politicians that are looking for votes who can't use the truth to get elected then choose to go with the flow and continue this China bad narrative. Anything other than that would be political suicide for them in the West. Now, if we're being honest, I feel that China appears to be quite bad at countering misinformation, but in fact they aren't. They simply know the truth is very hard to hide and they just don't bother countering it. They don't need to. It, truth will prevail. Think about this. The president of Equatorial Guinea was in China last month, as was the leader of the United Arab Emirates and the president of Egypt. China has established comprehensive strategic partnerships or strategic partnerships with 14 Arab countries and the Arab League and they are a key development partner of the Eurasian Economic Union. The president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, was here in China just a couple of weeks ago too. Xi Jinping was in France, Hungary, Serbia last month as well. Just a few weeks before that, Scholz from Germany was here in China. In April, the president of Micronesia was here, as was the president of Suriname. In fact, in April, China had visits from Asian countries, including Vietnam, uh, Singapore, and both Europe and the USA, with Blinken and Yellen at different times, came to China. China is also the founding member of BRICS, uh, also the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. 
the Regional and Comprehensive Economic Partnership. They are the largest trading partner of ASEAN and despite some political differences mostly brought about through this misinformation that we're talking about today, they are the largest trading partner of European Union too. In fact, as of last year, China was the largest trading partner of more than 120 countries. Now, if you cannot see a pattern there, then let me help you a little bit more. The South Pacific region, Latin America, Africa, Europe and the Middle East and most of Asia want to do business with China. Even the USA knows that it needs China. It needs China to slow down. <laughs> And they will do whatever they can to hinder China's growth. Now, domestically, regionally, and on a global scale, China is here to stay. And the U.S. better be careful of what their media, their think tanks, and their politicians wish for. If they want to decouple, de-risk, reshore production, or whatever fancy name that they're giving it now, they must accept that they will be hurting themselves a lot more than they will hurt China. China has already more trade with the developing world than it has with the developed world. China has also diversified away from basic manufacturing and moving towards high technology, although China is still the world leader in said basic manufacturing and trading by quite a long way, so they're winning on both races. The U.S. can take China out of their list of trading partners if they want, but they cannot take China out of their supply chains. China is here to stay, no matter what the, the misinformation might tell us, and no matter what the misinformation might want us to believe, China is not our enemy. And if you want confirmation of this, ask the African people. Ask the Latin Americans, ask all the Asians, or for that matter, do what I do, read Chinese media for the truth. All right, friends, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like this content, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. Hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video. If you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description to buy me a cup of coffee. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now. And to all of you who have supported me here on the screen, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.